You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook. The program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest senior options analyst and author of The Options Playbook. All right. Well, we have had some pullback in the volatility of the marketplace. And I'm going to I'm I'm using air quotes here in that we saw the VIX index actually last week break below the 50 level, and I thought that was fairly big because if you look back at the since 2008, we've only came up and touched the 50 level four times. The 50 level in the VIX index, the volatility index that tracks the 30-day volatility in the S&P 500 index, and we've always bounced off of that. We finally broke through it. We almost went to record highs relative to 2008 because they did recalculate the VIX at one point in time and how they do the math. And uh, now the fact that we're below it gives us a little bit of sense of security in that uh, people are becoming a little bit less scared of investing money in the marketplace. And then again, all of a sudden today we wake up and the markets are down and it has a little bit to do with what's going on with oil. We also obviously have the pandemic still going on that we don't necessarily have a cure for. So overall, if we look at the the marketplace, we are taping options playbook radio. It is the 15th. The market uh, is open and uh, we are taping during market hours today. And we have the S&P 500 index at this point in time. It's trading at 2,772. It's down about two and a half percent today. And then we have the VIX index jump back up above the 40, 40 level. And we see that at 42.29, it's up $4.50 or about 12% today. But I just like to see that VIX below the 50 level. It just I think it it gives me a sense of security that we are not in this extreme volatility environment where I really feel like that type of volatility, you have no idea where it's going to go. Is the VIX going to go to 150? Is it going to go to 75? When, once you get above 50, I think it's no hold bar as far as what's going on with the VIX index. Okay, so... Oil was in the news today. There was uh, major news just yesterday about coming to agreements. Everybody's fighting about what to do with the price of oil. The news yesterday was supposed to be positive. Uh, that was on Tuesday, the 14th, and oil still came down. So there's a, a big concern about demand. Uh, they're looking at maybe even all time lows in oil, but then again, uh, there's a lot of people that are invested in getting the price of oil back up to 
a higher level. Right now, I see oil is trading at 1963, the actual crude oil contract, and it's down about 2.5% approximately, around 48 cents as we tape Options Playbook Radio. So I want to do a rinse and repeat strategy. I know that this is not a, a lot of option traders out there. Uh, especially astute option traders think that the only way to make money in options is to sell option contracts. And they all, there's a big misnomer that like 80% of option contracts all expire worthless. So just, that doesn't even make sense. Most option contracts actually get closed and never even make it to the expiration date, according to data from the options clearing corporation. But overall, um, the, the the actual trades that have done well during this big downturn and leaning into the downturn has to be betting on more volatility as opposed to less volatility. So what, my point here is that the VIX has come down. Uh, there's still some volatility in the marketplace. Oil is definitely volatile. I think we're going to look at doing a long straddle in oil. We've already talked about this on Options Playbook Radio not that long ago. And it's kind of a rinse and repeat strategy here. Now, there's still a lot of volatility, and especially if you look at the USO, uh, which is an ETF that is based off of the the futures contracts on oil. It's the short-term one. There's also another uh, oil ETF that doesn't get discussed as much, and that's the USL. And the L stands for long-term. It's based off of the longer-term crude oil futures contracts as opposed to the shorter-term ones. It's a little bit less volatile than the USO, but they're still extremely volatile uh, um, ETFs overall. It may, it, they're extremely volatile in this day and age because the crude oil actual contract is so volatile. So we're just going to look at going out in – uh, oil. We'll use the USO. We could also, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting and one underlying that I looked at is actually MRO, which is Marathon Oil. Marathon Oil is also a $4 underlying, much the same as the USO. And Marathon Oil is a little bit more tied into gas prices overall, but it's an interesting alternative to trading that actual oil contract. The one problem about the USO or any of the ETFs that trade on commodities and those type of contracts, there's there's usually large fees in them. And so that does affect the price of them. Um, I think of them as short-term trading uh, vehicles more so as invest than investing uh, because of the large amount of fees that are involved in, in doing those and in the management of those type of ETFs that are based off of futures contracts. So with all that said, MRO is an interesting alternative. Uh, as always on Options Playbook Radio, we're just trying to learn. So maybe you want to do a paper trade in MRO and also a paper trade in USO and just try to see how this pricing dynamic works. Now, as far as these underlings are concerned, we have implied volatilities over 100%. So I would definitely look at trading this a little differently in that <clears throat> I'm going to probably put this position on, on paper, and I would look to see if I can get a move to the upside or to the downside, I might sell a call or sell a put depending on the direction, to leg into a long put spread or a long call spread. Try to take some of the risk off of the table while the volatility is still extremely high. So this is a much more hands-on long straddle, I think, than other ones that we've talked about, i.e. Boeing uh, back back in the day when Boeing was actually just all the concerns were about the about the Max and about their airplanes. Nowadays, their concerns are about everything, about uh, <laughs> about funding, about the, the planes, about orders being canceled. So Boeing is really, really a mess nowadays overall. But the government is trying to back them up and try to try to give them some funding. I digress. So if I look at MRO, MRO uh, Marathon Oil is actually down 30 cents on the day. And also, guess what? The USO is down 34 cents. The USO is a $34.30 stock as of right now, uh, 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 as we're doing this taping. And the MRO is a $4 stock. So I think it would be fun to kind of play each other, play them against each other and see how they move. Overall, if I'm going to invest in 
uh, oil, I would prefer to invest if you're using the stock market, you're not buying the actual crude oil contract. I would prefer to invest in companies that uh, that their stock price fluctuates along with the oil prices as opposed to dealing with these ETFs. But we're going to do a short-term trade in the USO, uh, long straddle, and we're going to go out in time a few days. Okay, so we're going to go out to the May 15th expiration, which is 30 days away. So we're going to give this some room to run, but we're going to be looking for a decent move in this. Now, unfortunately, the stock has moved a little bit. We have half point strikes in the May 15th expiration. Stock is right now at 432. So, the, of course, the strikes are 4 and 450. So you have to decide, am I going to be a little bit more bullish on oil or a little bit more bearish on oil? I'm going to pick the 450 strike. I'm, once again, just throwing a dart at the board. I have no idea what direction oil is going to go at this point in time. Uh, we had the good news out yesterday. And, this, and oil is down today. Uh, I, I say good news with air quotes. And so uh, we're going to look at the 30-day 450 strike long straddle in oil. Uh, May 15th is that expiration date. And if you look at that long straddle, we're talking about a, a real big move in this underlying that we would need over the next 30 days. Uh, the total cost is a dollar. So you're looking at $100 plus commission to put on this trade, and that will be your maximum risk. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but a $1 move on a $4.30 stock is over a 20% move. So you're looking for a pretty big move. So hence the reason why I say that if I got to move in either direction, I would look, look at selling that call above that underlying stock if the market went up, and I'd look at selling a put below the the strike that I bought uh, if the market went down. In other words, I would sell into the momentum and turn one of these into a long spread to try to recruit some of the, some of the impl implied volatility premium that we're paying here. So let's recap the trade. Uh, right now, the markets are open. We are taping Options Playbook Radio on Wednesday, April 15th. Uh, oil is last trade at $4.34. It's down 32 cents on the day. Uh, this, the strike, I would prefer to do an at-the-money strike, but we don't have that option here because there is no strike for right at the money. So we have to buy the 450 strike. So we're going to look at buying the USO 450 strike call. And then we're going to look at buying the USO 450 strike put. The call is trained for a little less right now because that call is actually out of the money and the put is a little bit in the money. The call on the ask is at 44 cents and the put on the ask is 60 cents. Now we have extremely tight markets right now. They're only one cent wide in both of the option contracts. The midpoint is a net debit of 103 but the ask is actually at 104. So obviously, if you're willing to pay a penny up, you can actually buy it right on that asking price. We'll say we buy it on the asking price of 104. If we were able to do that, that means we have $104 at risk for every one by one long straddle. That also means that we're looking for at least a one point move in one direction over the next 30 days. So that's our, our time period. If we do get a move in the direction, let's say it moves 50 cents in one direction, I would think about selling a call and legging into a long call spread if it was the move was to the upside, or I'd think about selling a put uh, and legging into a long put spread if the move was to the downside. And that's the way that I would approach this trade overall. You can also look at it in MRO. Uh, MRO is trading right at $4, so obviously you would just do the $4 long straddle. It's going to be a similar uh, similar cost. And I think that it'd be fun overall just to watch both of these trades. They're not meant to be recommendations, but if I look at MRO right now and I look at that 30-day long straddle, it's trading for approximately the same amount as the oil one uh, is at this point in time. So uh, the at the, the at the money call, the four uh, dollar strike call is trading for 56 cents and actually the, the at the money put is trading for 56 cents so you're looking at about a dollar 12 if you paid the ask uh, 
on the MRO long straddle for the same time period. Now, also, I forgot to mention this, is MRO is actually going to be announcing earnings. So May 5th is the anticipated earnings date, so that adds a little bit of a twist into it here. So that you might actually get a little bit of all premium, but this fall premium is because of the price of oil. Uh, and it's kind of odd that people are just ignoring I've seen implied volatilities come down as earnings announcements are anticipated, which is just such an oxymoron in the world of option trading. But vol has been so high because of the coronavirus on stocks all the way across the board that uh, the other day we were talking a little bit on the stock play of the day, which we post on YouTube inside the LI uh, YouTube channel. And down the stock play, we were talking about PayPal, and they were going to be announcing earnings, and the implied volatility actually had dropped leading up to the earnings because the market was actually going up on that day. So it was very interesting uh, time, very interesting time to be trading options. And uh, I, I definitely think oil is probably going to be front and center here in the near term. Only thing that's probably making bigger news is if they're if they can find a cure for. The coronavirus, obviously, that would be ginormous news. And there are also some some uh, some of the pharmaceutical companies out there are saying that they're finding uh, easier and better ways to test for coronavirus. And that's making big head headlines also. But I digress once again. So the paper trade, the official paper trade is we're going to do a long straddle on USO this week. The underlying stock is at $4.34. We're going to buy the 450 put and the 450 call going out to May 15th, which is 30 days away. Net debit is $1 for if you pay the ask or $104 for every one by one long straddle. Don't forget to add commissions. It's always important. And don't forget that this is never meant to be a recommendation. We just should be paper trading this and learning about option tradings uh, here on Options Playbook Radio. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll be back same time, same place next week. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer in the program, you can send them directly to me at theoptionsguy@invest.ally.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. Stay safe out there. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.